Our lesson today, like I said, is about the first five disciples. In the last lesson that we talked about, we talked about how Jesus had been tempted in the wilderness. Remember that? With Satan. Satan wanted him to do things in his timing, not in God's timing. But Jesus used God's word and he resisted Satan's temptation. So Jesus was then ministered to by the angels who came to him. Now it was time for him to start his public ministry on earth. So everyone would know, todos van a saber, quién es Jesús. So during this time, great teachers would have groups of people that would follow them. They would listen to their teaching and they would um, follow after them and they would say, you know, I learned under this person and they would be known as their disciples. That was a common thing at that time. Well, Jesus, he would soon be known as a great teacher because in all of his work to tell people about the gospel, he was teaching them. And so he would come to be known as a great teacher. And he would have people that would follow him called disciples. Just as John the Baptist, remember, he had disciples. So Jesus would have his own disciples. Well, of these people that would follow him, he would pick 12 that would be his special helpers. 12 that he knew their hearts he knew that they would um, be obedient to him. They were ready to accept him. And so they would be known as his apostles, the 12 apostles. A lot of times you may just hear of them as the 12 disciples, the 12 disciples. But we also have another special name for them, which is apostles, because they closely followed Jesus during the time that he was on earth. So we are going to talk about his, um, the first five that he chose to follow him today. So Jesus, as he was coming down from the mountain, he made his way towards the Jordan River. As he came down from where he had been for 40 days with the temptation, he's gotten all of his strength back, the angels had ministered unto him. And as he's coming down, walking along the path, John the Baptist is there at the river preaching. And he points out Jesus once again, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God pointing out that here he is, the Messiah, because remember, John knows exactly who Jesus is. Well, when he says that, there were two men who were followers of John, and so they had been waiting on this man, this Messiah. When they heard John say that, they recognized exactly what he meant. And so they left John and started following after Jesus as Jesus continued walking on the path, because they knew he was the Messiah they had been waiting for. Now, do you think John was upset that they left him? No, not at all. John had done his job. He was preparing them to follow after Jesus. So he wasn't jealous that they left him. That was his whole purpose. He wanted people to stop following him and to follow Jesus. Are we like that in our lives? Do you want people to look at you or to look at God? Everything that you do should be to point people to God, not to get the glory for yourself. So these two men, they were, we believe the first one was John. The Bible doesn't tell us, but we're pretty sure that the first one was John. And then we do know, the Bible does tell us, that the other one was Andrew. So we're going to say that they were John and Andrew following after Jesus. So John and Andrew followed him, and Jesus turned around to see these men following him. Now, he knew the whole time they were there because he knows everything. And he asked them, well, what do you want? And so they addressed him very respectfully. They called him rabbi, which is another name for teacher, master. And they said, rabbi, where do you live? They wanted to learn from him because they knew he was the Messiah, the man they had been waiting for to um, take all of their sins away, to defeat their enemy once and for all. They may not have understood at this time who the enemy was. They thought it was the Romans, not realizing that it was Satan. But they knew he was the Messiah. So they said, where do you live? Wanting to, to go with him and learn from him. So he said, come with me and see. And so he took them back to where he was staying for the moment. And they stayed the whole night with him, talking and learning from him and confirming that he was indeed the Messiah. Well, they knew that he was the one they had been waiting for. And so Andrew, he was very excited. He had a brother whose name was Simon Peter. And he wanted this brother to know Jesus because he knew that Jesus was the one. 
And so he wanted to make sure that his brother didn't miss it. His brother was a fisherman, just like Andrew was. And so Andrew ran to go find him. He probably called out, Simon, Simon, guess what? He's here, he's here, finally here. So he ran to Simon to tell him, Jesus, the Messiah, is here. Well, Simon, he believed his brother, he trusted him. And so he went with him, he went with Andrew, to go and find Jesus. And when he went to Jesus, Jesus told, Jesus, uh, told him that he was going to change his name. He would no longer be known as Simon, but as Cephas, which means rock. Now, Jesus was calling him that because, for a lot of reasons, and we'll see some more um, another time in another lesson, but part of the reason was that Peter would help to be the foundation of the church. Peter would help with the very beginnings of the church in the, um, the Bible age. And so, what do, what do you build on when you build a house? Well, you build on something that's strong and solid, like rock. And so that's what Peter would be like, because he would be one of the founders of the church. And so Simon Peter began following after Jesus, just as his brother Andrew had invited him to do. And he probably, when Andrew went to him, he probably told him everything that Jesus had told him, was excited to spread his testimony. Are you excited to tell people about what Jesus does for you? We should always be willing and ready to tell everyone about Jesus. Do all of your family members know about Jesus? Do you tell them about him? Don't be afraid to talk about Jesus. You need to have the courage to talk to others about Jesus, to tell them about how much Jesus has done for you, how much you love him, and how they need to know him, how they need to ask him to be their savior too. Of course, do it nicely. If they don't want to listen to you, you have to be very kind to them about it. But you should always be willing and excited to tell people about who Jesus is. You don't want them to miss out on him. Because if they miss out on him, they don't go to heaven when they die. So you need to be spreading Jesus to everyone you know, your friends, your family. When people see you and they know you, they should know um, that you are a follower of Jesus. So now Jesus has three men who are following him. Andrew, Simon, and John. Well... As they were there, because <clears throat> now Jesus is with John, Simon, Andrew, there were a bunch of fishermen around. There was another fisherman named Philip. And Jesus went to Philip, and he uh, began talking to him and telling him who he was. And he told him to follow me, because Jesus knew that in Philip's heart, Philip believed exactly who Jesus was. And so he said, come, follow after me. And Philip, he was more than happy to follow after Jesus. He knew that Jesus was the Messiah. So now we have four disciples, John, Simon, Andrew, and Philip. And so Philip, he did exactly what Andrew did. He wanted his friend to know Jesus. He didn't want him to miss out. So he went running to find his friend, Nathaniel. Now Nathaniel was outside the city somewhere, we're not exactly sure where, but he was sitting under a fig tree. What he was doing, I don't know, maybe he was just taking a rest, maybe it was a really hot day, and maybe he was praying, who knows what he was doing. But he was out there under a fig tree. And so Philip went to find Nathaniel. Nathaniel, Nathaniel, guess what? The Messiah is here, he, is, he talked to me. He asked me to follow him. You have got to come and meet him. And so Nathaniel, he was a little bit not sure about this. And he said, really? And Philip said, yes, he is Jesus of Nazareth. Philip said, wait a second. Because Nazareth, remember, that was a very poor city. And it didn't really have a good reputation. Nobody, nobody that was worth anything came from Nazareth. And so he said, really? What, what good comes out of Nazareth? Who, who that's actually worth something would come out of Nazareth? Philip said, no, 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 you just, you've got to come and meet him, so come, come with me. And so Nathaniel goes to meet Jesus. And when he meets with Jesus, Jesus says, ah, here comes a true and honest man of Israel, a man who understands the things of God, a genuine, um, a genuine believer. And Nathaniel just kind of looked at him. How do you know who I am? How do you know what I'm like? What's in my heart? 
And Jesus, he says, I can see you under the fig tree before Philip even found you. So Jesus knew exactly where <clears throat> Nathaniel had been, what he had been doing at the time. And that's pretty spectacular, right? If nobody's around, how, how does someone know what you're doing? Well, Jesus, he's God, so he knows everything. So he told Philip, or excuse me, Nathaniel, that he knew exactly where he had been, what he was doing, and Nathaniel, he was amazed. And it was like a light bulb went on, bing! He said, you are the son of God. You truly are our Messiah. And, and Jesus just looked at him and he said, oh, really, okay, so you believe me when I just told you that I knew you were under the fig tree? That was good faith that Nathaniel had because Jesus told him, you are going to see even greater things than that, even bigger signs that will confirm that I am who I say I am. But Nathaniel, he was ready to believe right away that Jesus was who he said he was. And so now Jesus has his first five disciples. That will be also known as the 12 apostles when we get up to 12. So who were they? Can you name the first one? No, the first two. John and Andrew, right? Then after them, there came Simon. Very good, Simon Peter. We don't really know him as Cephas. We know him more as Peter, right? Yes. Then who was the next one? Philip. And lastly, there was Nathaniel. Now notice, it spread to five people so quickly because it wasn't just Jesus talking to each one. John the Baptist had prepared these two. Now, when I say John, it's not John the Baptist, it's a different John. We know him as John the Beloved. So John the Baptist had prepared John and Andrew. Then Andrew went and got Simon. Then Jesus spoke to Philip, and Philip went and got Andrew. Jesus wants you to do the same thing that these apostles did. Jesus wants you to go out and tell other people. If you go tell someone, and they accept Jesus as their Savior, and then they go tell someone and they accept Jesus as their savior. And then they tell someone and they accept Jesus as their savior. It grows and grows and grows and grows. And the body of Christ is multiplied. More and more people become Christians. So we have that responsibility to tell as many people as we can about who Jesus is and how to accept him as their savior. Well, that's all that we have for today. So I want you to keep that in mind, that you need to be going out and telling people about who Jesus is and spreading the message of Jesus. I want you guys to have a great day, and I will see you in our next lesson. Bye!